Restaurant Marketing Secrets, episode 144. I'm your host, Matt Plapp, and we are ringing out the new year with the last episode of the year. This podcast is brought to you, as always, by America's Best Restaurants. America's Best Restaurants is on a path to help you, independent restaurant owners, find more frequent customers. Because right now, the restaurants that I see on a national level, independent operators everywhere, hundreds of them, thousands, 60 to 70% of their sales on a weekly basis come from infrequent customers, people that are first timers, people that are haven't been in a long time, people that probably won't come back for a while because you didn't do what it took to get their information to invite them back. Different podcast, but you need to be building a marketing plan. As I talked about the other day, we're going to get more in depth in in January around how to find more frequent customers and how to cultivate more frequent customers because at the end of the day, infrequent customers don't pay your damn bills. So today, talking about a topic that I feel strongly about, and it's timely because in 41 minutes, one of my three people walked through the front door. You all need a coach. Every independent restaurant owner out there, in my opinion, the ones that I see succeeding all have these three coaches. A business coach that is helping them with the in-depth operational issues, efficiencies, fine-tuning of the restaurant, Example would be David Scott Peters. I have a lot of clients that use DSP, and they, they're amazing how well they operate their restaurant and how much money they make. The second, and these are in no order, but <clears throat> I guess you could kind of say they are in a pretty solid order because operations are where it shall start. Second is finance. You should have a financial expert on your side. I have my outsourced CFO coming in who also happens to own three different accounting firms and is also our accounting firm and our tax firm and all that good stuff. I don't do taxes. I don't handle the tricky payroll questions. I don't do the planning and all that stuff. I I rely on him and his team to help me. And the third one is marketing. You must 100% have a marketing company on your side at a deep level and not, not on a small basis from a standpoint of having you help with one little product here. They're like, you got a company that helps your website, a company that helps your Facebook ads, a company that helps with, you know, your email and text marketing. You need to have somebody that at a high level can give you advice on how to properly market your restaurant, how to properly execute the marketing strategies to attract the right people. And what you have to avoid is you have to avoid having yes people. And what I mean by that is I find too often in business, people get advice from people who are afraid to hurt their feelings. The owner's afraid to hear the truth. The owner's afraid to hear some things that might hurt their feelings or might change how they think. And I commonly tell our clients that I'm a terrible, terrible secretary. And I hope my team is a terrible, terrible secretary because our goal isn't to be secretaries. Our goal is to be experts and give you the guidance you need to get to the next level. My vision is to help restaurant owners like you find your dream outcome. In order to find your dream outcome, we have to put a path. We have to find that path. We have to put a plan in place to get on that path. And sometimes that takes in-depth analysis that cannot have a yes mentality. And I'll give you an example. I'm looking at a chart right now. And one of the biggest weaknesses that our clients have across the board is they're not executing on a bunch of little tiny things. And I've been spending the last 45 days building out a crazy intensive program for next year that we're going to put our clients through. We're going to go to the next level on coaching and tweaking and helping them. And it's going to take us getting uncomfortable about some conversations about little things. 
One of those little things is their website. We're not a website company, but we know a lot about how restaurants' websites should work. And I'll give you an example. I'm looking at a restaurant's dashboard right now for a tool that we have in their restaurant's website that helps us and helps them, I guess you could say, gather customer data. Not people that are buying, because there's a lot of people on your website that aren't buying. They're looking. This tool has gathered 6,249 people's information since it's been live for about 18 months. 6,249 people since it's been live for 18 months. 1,692 of those people have walked through the front door and spent money with the bribe that we gave them for filling out that form. That's 27%. It's driven $68,266.42 in net sales. The only reason that pop-up is on the website is because our company brought that to them and said this is important to get on your website. Here's what it's going to do. They trusted our opinion. They trusted our expertise. And they took the action. And I believe this client... The first two or three times we brought it to them didn't take the action, but they finally did. And sometimes we ask for things five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times. And unfortunately, sometimes my team gives up and quits asking, which disappoints me, which is a whole other topic, because next year we're not going to quit asking. We're going to push. We're going to push the envelope because I want to help our clients find excellence. I want to help our clients win. But the reason I bring that up is there's no cost to the cost of that, that tool being on the website. They have us on their team. We have all these things that we help them do, things we coach them on how to do, things that we work together on. I call it the do-it-yourself, the done-with-you, the done-for-you model, where there's things that they have to do themselves that we advise them on. There's things that we work with them on. There's things that we do for them completely. There is traffic going to the website that may or may not cost money, that people might be finding it from Yelp, from their iPhone, from whoever, from wherever. And those people's information is being gathered, collected at the customer's request. And as you can see, 27% of them are walking in the front door. And that's just the front end of this. That 68 grand could very well be 680 grand, the lifetime value of those customers. But the reason I bring this up is you've got to have people on your side that are going to tell you sometimes the harsh truth. Your website sucks. That email tool you've got that says, hey, sign up for our newsletter. That sucks. Now, granted, there's a correct way to say it. But you've got to be open to it. Last week, I had a call. I had a company give me a call that works with one of our clients. And the prior week, I had talked to this client as well. And I hadn't dealt with this client much. Some of our other team did. And he'd been going through some sales issues and some operational issues. I had hooked him up with some people that I highly trust that can help them get to the next level because they have a lot of operational inefficiencies, in my opinion, and from talking to them and finding out they did not have any type of business coach, I highly recommended it. But it was funny because I get a call from this marketing consultant that they work with that I had never met that didn't know existed, and half my team didn't know existed. And he's asking questions, and those questions got me to start looking deeper. And I looked at this client's presence online, their website, their social some of the tools on their website, the lack of video, the fact that they had like two videos in three months posted. And I put together a 20-minute video where I walked through what I see that's happening on our end, on the their end, on their website company's end, on their social media company's end, all these different things. And what I see is the op- opportunities. What are the gaps? What are good? What are bad? What are ugly? And I gave that to them. I've not heard back in a week. And so now it's my time for my team to follow up. Let's look and see if that is accurate. Because I know I sent it to the owner himself. And I'm going to give him a call today. And it doesn't look like he has watched that. And let's go to his company's thing. His company's group within our, our world. There's the video seen by nine people. Not seen by him. Sad. It's not disappointing that he hasn't seen it yet. So I will go ahead and make sure I'll text this to him today. But this comes down to 
having systems in place that when you have companies you're working with that have a platform that that's how they communicate. It's almost, this is equivalent to him not opening an email because he got an email on this. You got to rely on the people that are helping you. That if you're paying people to help you, if you're going to a doctor and the doctor is saying, do this, this, and this, and then you go home and go, ah, eh, maybe not. You shouldn't have that doctor. You need to find a doctor you trust, but you also need to be able to accept, accept their advice and know that, okay, I'm a restaurant operator. I'm a crazy good cook. I'm an awesome hospitality person. I'm this, that, and the other. What I am not is a you know, operational expert like David Scott Peters. What I am not is a financial wizard with restaurant numbers like Ann Gannon. What I am not is a marketing guru or somebody called me the other day, restaurant marketing Jesus, which I'll take that all day long. I'm not Matt Platt, but I've got these people on my team. Let's put together a super, or all of our superpowers and, and win. But what I, I really want you to, I want to encourage you to do is don't do it alone. Don't go into 2023 thinking you're going to fix what you didn't fix this year. I, I can tell you that for me exactly one of the things. That's why I've got Chris who's sitting here, our CFO that just showed up. That's why I've got Josh Nelson who commented on something this morning or yesterday on Facebook, and I'll go see him in two months. That's why I just had Jeff Ruby here doing business coaching for us for core values and leadership because I realize I can't do it alone. I've got to have people around me, and I've got to trust their advice and their vision. So that's all I got. We're going to end the year with a bang. We're going to end a year six, I guess seven months in almost. 144 episodes. A bunch more to come out next year. Maybe next year I'll go every day of the week. Maybe I'll go 365 days for 2022, 2023. What do you think? I don't know. Maybe we will. Let's try it out. So what I want you to do as we sign off is I want you to go to mattplapp.com and I want you to Scroll to the very bottom. I want you to follow me on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook. Send me a message in Messenger. I want you to connect with me because I, my promise to you is I'm going to continue to put out content on every platform that is not self-serving, that is serving you, that is allowing you to find guidance, find experts, find things that you need to grow your business. Because on a weekly basis, I interview different experts that you need to know. On a weekly basis, I put out case studies and data about stuff you need to know, like that website thing I gave you a minute ago. How many of you do not have the proper tool on your website to get 6,200 people's information in 18 months and drive 68 grand? Imagine if this restaurant didn't have that tool. Yes, some of those people are coming to the restaurant. I challenge you, there's a good portion of them that would not have come back and used that promotion. Some of these people were activated by the marketing that was behind that tool. So that's the stuff I'm going to constantly drop on you. That's all I got. Happy New Year. I hope 2022 was awesome for you. I look forward to a great next year. See you later.